This is the Sabbath School lesson for the third quarter, 2021. Lesson 13 from the series Rest in Christ is titled The Ultimate Rest. It's ready for teaching on September 25 and I'm Percy Harold. Friday, September 24. From the book Gospel Workers by Ellen G. White, page 219, we read, We all desire immediate and direct answers to our prayers and are tempted to become discouraged when the answer is delayed or comes in an unlooked-for form. But God is too wise and good to answer our prayers always at just the time and in just the manner we desire. He will do more and better for us than to accomplish all our wishes. And because we can trust His wisdom and love, we should not ask Him to concede to our will, but should seek to enter into and accomplish His purpose. Our desires and interests should be lost in His will. End of quote. And from the same author, Councils on Stewardship, page 350. It will only be a little while before Jesus will come to save his children and to give them the finishing touch of immortality. The graves will be opened and the dead will come forth victorious, crying, O death, where is thy string? O grave, where is thy victory? Our loved ones who sleep in Jesus will come forth clothed with immortality. And that brings us to our four discussion questions for this week. 1. Think about the reality of the great controversy. How do you see it being played out in the world? How about in your own personal life? It's very real, isn't it? In fact, it's more real than many people think, because many don't believe in a literal devil. Why is understanding the reality of the great controversy so important in helping us to understand the state of our world? Also, why is our understanding of how this great controversy will end so comforting? 2. Prophecy can be a distraction if we try to go beyond what is clearly revealed. How often have church members gotten in trouble making predictions about events that didn't come to pass, or believing in others' predictions that didn't come to pass? How can we protect ourselves from falling into that kind of trap? 3. In class, go over Revelation 14, 9-11, and the question about those who worship the beast and his image not having rest. What might that mean? Let's just read those texts. Then a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and his image and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascends for ever and ever, and they have no rest day or night who worship the beast and his image, and whoever receives the mark of his name. And for a controversial topic in the church has to do with what role we do or do not have in the timing of Christ's return. Whatever position one takes on this, why is it still very important that we take an active role in spreading the message of his return to the world? Inside Story Our mission story this week is titled Tough First Day at School and it's by Andrew McChesney The first day of school was hard for Niang Myung Really, really hard The nine-year-old girl had arrived in the United States only a month earlier from Myanmar Her parents were refugees She didn't know English and she didn't have any friends Hello, what's your name? a girl asked Niang shook her head. No, she said. Oh, said the girl, confused. Where are you from? Niang shook her head again. No, she said. Niang was not trying to be rude. She just didn't understand. Because she didn't know English, she sat quietly all morning in class. At lunchtime, she followed the other children to the cafeteria and looked at the food being served. Nacho cheese and shredded beef, mini pizzas, chicken nuggets. The food was very strange to her. She was used to eating mustard leaves, potato leaves, watercress, brown beans and red lentils. 
After tasting the food, she returned to the classroom and sat quietly until school ended for the day. At home, she prayed for help. Dear God, please help me survive another day at school, she said. Fourth grade was tough, but fifth grade was better. She began to speak English and to make friends. What's your name? a girl asked. My name is Niang. She replied with a shy smile. And where are you from? the girl asked. I'm from Burma, which is also called Myanmar, Niang said. The girl nodded her head. She had heard of the country. Several other refugee children from Myanmar also studied at their school. OK, OK, she said. Do you want to play? Niang felt happy. She was beginning to fit in. She felt even happier in seventh grade. She was able to transfer from the public school to a Seventh-day Adventist school thanks to money from a 2011 13 Sabbath offering to help refugees in the North American division. She thanked God in her daily prayers. Dear God, thank you so much for helping me learn this new language and for taking care of me, she prayed. And I know that there are people who are listening to this uh, reading of the Sabbath school lesson who are learning English doing it. And may God bless you, and may your English continue to improve. But you don't have to speak it with a Percy Harold accent. Part of this quarter's 13th Sabbath offering will help more child refugees like Niang study at Adventist schools. Niang is now 21, and there's a photograph of her right here, and studying to become a mission doctor. I was a mission doctor once in Hong Kong from 1974 to 1978. May God bless each of us as we continue to study His Word and look forward to next quarter's lessons. This lesson was read by Dr. Percy Harold for Christian Services for the Blind. It's supported by the Sabbath School Department and Hope Channel Australia and is rebroadcast by Christian Record Services and through podcasts at It Is Written in the United States, Hope Channel Germany and through Apple iTunes and SoundCloud. Remember... God is always faithful.